Houston on two. Toma, are you ready for the event? And Houston, we are ready for the event. European Space Agency, this is Mission Control Center Houston. Please call the station for a voice check. Station, this is Melanie at ESA. How do you hear me? Hey, Melanie, welcome to ISS. I have you loud and clear. How me? I hear you loud and clear, and it's my pleasure today to hand you over to ESA's Director General, Josef Aschbacher. Hi, Doma. Very nice to see you. It has been a while that we saw each other, and it uh, was really great. Uh, thank you again for your phone call you gave me from the station to my birthday. This is very special and uh, my best birthday wishes ever in my life. But today we have two very special guests here. We have uh, Commissioner Thierry Breton, Commissioner for Internal Market, and we have uh, Commissioner Virginius Senkevicius, I hope I pronounced it right, Commissioner for Environment, Oceans and Fisheries. And this is uh, very important for us as ESA. Uh, it's a very symbolic moment, I should say. We have a commissioner in charge of space. We have a commissioner who is using space data, uh, and this is, uh, is really great. So we are very happy to be connected to you, Thomas, and uh, I would like to really hand over to Thierry and uh, give the microphone to him to interact a bit with you and see how it goes. Bonjour, Thomas. Uh, hello. I hope that Bonjour. I hope every, Hi, everything, from space. Uh, everything, happy to be with you today. Uh, yes, everything is fine up there. So, Thomas, um, uh, uh, as you know, we are we are now uh, uh, in, uh, in in Europe. Uh, we are extremely keen on space, and of course, the Commission is playing a very important role under my directorate. Uh, we have now a new directorate for space, uh, and uh, of course. Uh, what you are doing is definitely, and space is definitely about uh, international cooperation. So, first, we are extremely proud and happy that Europe is playing a big role here. Secondly, we are very proud that uh, you are here today in space and are representing uh, uh, Europe. Uh, so, my first question will be, um, uh, how do you feel this feeling of cooperation uh, uh, up there? And how you play, uh, of course, your European role, while, of course, uh, uh, being definitely part of this uh, uh, tremendous uh, international uh, uh, story. Yes, and it's uh, it's a, it's a great question. I think I think you see it. I mean, right away you see it around me. I'm, I'm answering your question from the Japanese modules. There's all the flags behind me uh, on a on an international space station, a U.S. part, obviously Russian part. The European module is on the other side um, of where I'm standing right now. So it's a very very international environment. Uh, different languages being spoken, um, and and it's really. A good feeling to be part of this. I think everybody brings their own culture, um, and as as Europeans, um, I think it's in our DNA to uh, to cooperate internationally. Because when we bring something to the to the international space station partners, it has it has already been through, you know, getting an agreement within Europe, which is not easy. So sometimes, yeah, it's more complicated. But I think it brings us it brings us a resolve um, that that we show uh, in uh, in all the international projects. I think. The space station is a great example. It's very visible. Uh, it binds together a lot of countries um, visibly, and, and it shows what we have in common rather than highlighting our differences. Um, I think it puts it puts the spotlight on, uh, on, uh, on what we have in common, and we have a lot in common. We're here doing research. We're here trying to explore. I think it applies to, to everyone trying to push the boundaries of knowledge and exploration, but we've decided to act up upon it. Um, but it's happening, you know, it's happening at a level uh, that is above any single country. I mean, no matter how powerful you are, if you want to, if you want to go to Mars, if you want to solve global problems, uh, it's happening at a global level. So I think that's what cooperation brings to the table, and I think that's in our DNA as Europeans. Well, I, I, see, I think you said it. We are, we, we are pretty well prepared in Europe uh, to manage uh, our differences and diversity, and yes, Space is about managing cooperation, international cooperation. 
So we are we are we are very happy and proud that, of course, uh, you represent uh, uh, us uh, in uh, in Europe. Maybe before uh, handling to to Virginius to to speak a bit more in detail about uh, what uh, what you can do in terms of experiments in terms of uh, 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 watching and monitoring the planet. Uh, um, uh, of course, uh, uh, you are you are you are, and we can see this here. You are managing a lot of instruments, but also a lot of data. You are generating and creating a huge amount of data. And I will be interesting to, to hear about uh, your feeling about this um, managing data space, because uh, uh, we organize ourselves here, and especially in the Commission, to make sure that we'll be able to, um, to use this data for, uh, for, 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 for us in Europe, or, but of course for the planet. So how do you see this? I think um, I think it, it it comes back to solving global problems, right? The the data we need is at a global level. So so space is a privileged vantage point, it's a privileged place where we can gather data across the entire planet. If you talk about navigation, if you talk about communication, we can span entire continents if we have our assets in space. Um, and and if you talk about even environment, you you need to get you know whatever ocean water temperature everywhere on the planet. How can you do this? Nobody has that many ships right but from space we can do it so so we gather that huge amount of data we do it uh, daily on the ISS but also obviously with satellites um, and then we put that at, dis at the disposal of society because we're, we're a public service so to speak um, so with that then we're trying to solve the problems with that with that gold mine of data that we gather from space then you can have for example a more efficient agriculture you can you, you know you can look at the weather you can have precise navigation for your tractors you can do everything things so much better uh, if you're using that that gold mine of data so so I think that's what um, our space assets our European space assets are giving us they're very much oriented towards serving the public in Europe and solving global problems uh, and it's true for us on the International Space Station but it's also of course true uh, for observation satellite in the Copernicus program so it's a good transition for Virginius Virginius I think using data maybe just uh, um, one word on the Introducing Virginius, of course, he's in charge of uh, topics that are very, uh, uh, very uh, much on top of everyone's agenda, politically and uh, um, on everyone's election agenda, on everyone's political agenda. Also, Thierry uh, is uh, putting a lot of emphasis through Copernicus on environment. Uh, I know the program well, but I would like to hear also from the Commission side uh, on the environmental aspects, uh, fisheries, uh, ocean aspects, uh, and how you see it up there, uh, Thomas. But over to you, Virginius. So hello, Thomas. It's a great honor and privilege to speak with you, and uh, I'm still impressed when I see you there and I can hear you so well, loud and clear. Yeah, the, the reception is sometimes better than the signal you, you get on the mobile phone in, a, in, a, in I was <laughs> going to say in Europe, but no, because the commission is going to make it better in some other places. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. but. Coming now and, 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 and seeing and hearing you actually, I was 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 very well impressed uh, with with how you already trans, uh, put the message through that to fight global challenges we have to be united, and it should be really hard from up there basically to see our forests on fires, oceans changing, with uh, uh, ice caps melting. And unfortunately, that happens to a lot due to human activity. And I feel that we have a lot of debates now on uh, climate change. And many politicians have their opinions, and they tend to, to, to speak about very fancy things. But I think what we lack is actually to speak more about biodiversity and taking a better care of our planet. Because all the services that it can provide uh, is there and and not so many fancy solutions are actually can replace it. I see that you are a big supporter of uh, SDG 17 goals that they are part of, of 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 your work. Maybe you could tell us a bit more because I think that's the basis on which we can base our solution and achieve that we have a livable pl planet not only for ourselves but for our children and of course grandchildren. 
Yeah, I think thanks thanks for that question and, and for the opportunity to, to talk about those topics because they're dear to my heart. Um, and like you said, I think I've, I've made sure that the SDGs were, were included in my mission patch just because it's a personal goal of mine, but also because I think it's what we're doing at ESA. We're, like I said, we're a public service. We're trying to make the world a better place um, in so many different ways. And, and our action really helps uh, some of those SDGs, if not all of these SDGs. So it's kind of a... It's kind of a um, uh, like an acknowledgement uh, on my mission patch for everyone to see that what we're doing is not just for ourselves, it's for everyone, for the greater good. Um, and yeah, I think from here, from our vantage point in Lower Sorbit, if I open the windows behind me, it's too bright outside right now, I don't want to blind you, but um, but what you see is uh, most of the time beautiful, but sometimes also kind of frightening. Um, you see the effects of, of climate change. Obviously, you, you see recently, like yes, today, actually, this morning, we saw a second thunderstorm approaching the, the south eastern United States. We've seen um, Ida recently. I took pictures down the, the eye of the storm, which was hugely impressive. We see more and more of those, uh, unfortunately, even from my mission four years ago. Now it's like we, there's a new one every week. Um, you see the glaciers melting. In Patagonia, we're discussing it with Mark the other day. He was looking down Patagonia. Um, you see uh, water pollution. You see erosion. Um, all the sediments coming down, washing down the rivers off into the sea because of deforestation upstream, you know, in the in the Amazonian forest and other places, uh, you see air pollution. I mean, you see all those things, uh, and it really makes you think. It makes you think that the, the planet is very fragile. Um, it's a it's a tiny little spaceship with a, a few billion, you know, crew members. But the same principles apply uh, to us up here um, and to Earth. I mean, you have to manage your resources, right, on the space station. If you want to the flight to to keep going, if you want to have food, if you want to have air, water, uh, we have to manage this very efficiently. You have to get along. We didn't choose the other crew members, but we have to get along with them. Um, and, you know, we want the flight to to last as long as possible. And we want the, the flight of planet Earth, um, you know, to last as long as possible, because there's just no planet B. It's not as if there was another planet so far. So, uh, so it makes you think we're trying to capture this. We're trying to bring the human perspective. We talk talked about all the data that we get from space, but we're also trying to get the vision from the astronaut, like put those problems at a, at a human scale. If it's something you can take a picture of, if it's something that you can experience with, with your own you know, senses, then, then, it's gonna, then people are going to feel concerned. People are going to feel impacted. Sometimes those problems are too big. They're too far away. It's, it's hard to grasp. And I think that what we're doing, what I'm trying to do, um, is not only to have the scientific approach, the data, the science that ESA is, is very much at the forefront off, but it's also to be an advocate and, and to bring in some, you know, some human perspective. So if, if, I've if I've achieved some of this, then, you know, even with, with all the rest, all the science and etc., I, I think the mission is going to be a success, I hope. There is clearly uh, a lot uh, definitely to be done. And I'm, I'm very proud that, you know, uh, it's not coincidence that we are here today with, with my colleague Thierry Breton, because Green Deal, uh, the plan which this commission put out, it requires a horizontal decisions across all the policy areas. And especially when we speak about uh, uh, tough decisions uh, about our internal market, but also uh, what happens uh, around Europe. But most importantly, you already spoke about it, data har harvesting. I mean, data is, is, is a gold of these days. And I, I, and I think it's so many untapped uh, potential which we still need to use in order actually to implement our Green Deal uh, solutions faster. But what I'm extremely reassured that the Green Deal team is not only here uh, in Brussels around the governments, but the Green Deal, Deal team is also in the space. And I'm very thankful to you for what you have said. Uh, it's a great message which has to be spread of what you see and, 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 and unfortunately that you see those changes coming way faster than anyone could expect. There is multiple scientists' reports which we should read carefully and act. I think this is what everyone expects us to do. And your collected data, your collected knowledge only confirms that. So I hope we will use that data very well and our cooperation will only put the Green Deal not as number one agenda here in Europe, but around the globe. And I can I can only agree with that. And and sometimes people ask me, but but what can we do, you know, to help? And and my answer is usually, well, I try to think about in everything you do, 
try to think about uh, the impacts on the environment and the consequences, not just once in a while, but pretty much in everything you do. And that's pretty much what you said at a political level. Um, if you're taking that filter on, on every decision, then I think that's a really right approach and that's an attitude that's going to go a long way. So I'm, uh, I'm happy that we could share among, uh, along those topics. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to the European Green Deal and to all those, those virtuous initiatives. Um, I'm trying to do my share up here on the space station uh, in the name of ESA, obviously, because ESA is a big player on those topics. And hopefully when I'm back on Earth and uh, we, can, we can build up on that and, and do even more. Maybe, Thomas, since you talk of the Green Deal and uh, what uh, astronauts can do, astronauts have a very powerful voice, as we all know, and uh, your uh, observation point is unique. Uh, you see the planet from a very specific uh, uh, viewpoint. Uh, as you know, the satellites, uh, Copernicus satellites of Thierry and uh, the ones uh, being used by Virginius are a perfect uh, um, uh, combination of, uh, of viewpoints uh, from satellites who are measuring quantitatively, quantitatively and you uh, with your human eye and uh, your emotions which are coming on top. But what, what I really would like to, uh, to dream of or to imagine is that uh, this technology uh, where we have uh, the data side on one side through the Copernicus missions, uh, uh, which uh, uh, Thierry is uh, managing and uh, owning, uh, basically, but also on the user side to, to use it to the full strength uh, for Europe, uh, for our planet, and making sure that uh, climate change can be not only understood, but more than that, that we even can uh, use all this data with uh, all the digital means to simulate uh, situations on our planet. And therefore, this simulation for me is very important for decision makers uh, and for politicians. And I think you are help Omar when you come back uh, back on Earth, uh, this would be essential uh, that we can work together on uh, seeing it from your side and uh, you are giving your impressions. Uh, we are trying to do it with our machines and our satellites. And I think this combination is, uh, is, is enormously powerful. We have seen it uh, already in the past and this is something I'm re really looking forward to. And I think this is something I, I would like to engage uh, maybe a bit more formally, maybe creating a flagship uh, as an ambition of uh, Europe has a leadership and uh, where we can really combine uh, these various elements of it. So thank you very much. And uh, Thomas, uh, it will be a pleasure being part of this. And, and Thomas, j'espère que vous faites bien la cuisine pour vos collègues aussi là-haut. Hein. <laughs> Malheureusement, ils ont été un peu déçus par mes talents, mes talents culinaires, mais j'ai encore, encore quelques semaines pour me rattraper. Donc, euh, je suis aidé par des chefs oh. euh, en France, donc, donc tout va bien. Ça va, j'arrive à m'en sortir. <laughs> Attention, parce que... Attention, parce que bientôt, bientôt vous allez peut-être avoir encore d'autres responsabilités. Là, il va falloir assumer aussi sur ce terrain-là. Oui, c'est vrai. Peut-être un, petit peu, okay. un, peu, un peu moins de temps pour la cuisine, mais, mais bon, il me reste quelques euh, temps encore. Absolument. Bravo, en tout cas. Et on compte sur vous et on est très fiers de vous. Thank you very much, Thomas. We are very proud of what you do together with your team up there. Thank you. Merci. And it was a pleasure being with you today. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you Thomas. And uh, have a good continuation of your work. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thomas. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from ESA. And for the ISS, we'll now be resuming operational space to ground.